at times of economic scarcity, um, generally uh, the politicians in this country right now uh, want to look for scapegoats, want to organize around race as opposed to around principle and around values. Uh, and I think that's a mistake, and I think that can be countered, but it's going to require the kinds of grassroots mobilization uh, and, and the kinds of work at a local level that I think uh, I talk about a lot in, in those chapters on Chicago. Wonderful man there, Reverend Wright. Right, and yeah. uh, who is, who is uh, my pastor, and uh, he is a wonderful man. And I think it, uh, that's an example of, uh, he's a pastor of a, of a large congregation in Chicago, and one of the interesting things that I discover in my journey to discover mm -hmm. what my identity is and who my father is, is, is also discovering sort of uh, my own faith, which, which is not a necessarily a traditional faith. I don't come out of an institutionalized religious setting. But uh, uh, what becomes important to me as I work with uh, churches in the mm -hmm. south side of Chicago and low-income neighborhoods uh, is to realize that you know, all the stories and songs of the church, uh, you know, the, the, the hope that is embodied in yeah. the church, the, the, the sense of, 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 of liberation that is embodied in the African, historically African-American church uh, is really something that, that, that moves me deeply and I think uh, uh, is probably the main pillar around which a lot of inner cities uh, communities are going to be built. And Reverend Wright, uh, uh, my pastor, who I, I speak about in a chapter in the book, I think represents the best of what uh, the black church has to offer.